Okay, what we want to look at next is writing including sensory details. And this is something important when you're writing an essay, say, um, an argumentative essay, or in fact any sort of essay, um, you do want to have your essay be very logical. You want the logic to add up and not have any logical fallacies and things like that. Um, you also want the reader to trust you uh, by showing that the uh, quality of the information you use is high quality, uh, comes from reliable sources, things like that. But even if you do both of those, if the reader does not care about what you have to say, your essay is not going to be effective. So what we want to do is get our reader emotionally involved in whatever it is that you're talking about. Um, and one of the ways to do this, there are several ways, but one of the ways to do this is to put in lots of description, lots of details to pull the reader in through the senses. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to engage the reader emotionally. Um, and you're going to use all of the senses. So when you're talking about descriptive writing and you're describing something, uh, what we want to do um, is talk about uh, what you see, of course, but a lot of other things too. Um, so typically when you're asked to describe something, the first thing you think of is sight. What does something look like? What did you see at this event? Uh, things like that. And the reason you think of sight first is because human beings are very visually oriented creatures. Um, we get most of our information about the world around us through our eyes. So the very first thing we think of typically when we're asked to describe something is just what did we see? However, just telling the reader what you saw or what something looks like is not going to get the reader as emotionally involved as if you get the other senses in. For instance, sound. Um, so sounds that you heard. Uh, for example, if you are right now sitting in a classroom, uh, you may be hearing things like the whoosh of the climate control ventilation system, or you may be hearing chairs that squeak when people's weight shifts in them, and things like that. Um, so sound helps to fill the reader in on um, the uh, whole experience. Another sense that you want to get the reader with to get emotional um, is touch or feeling. And this involves not just touching something physically and saying, what does it feel like? So if you put your hand on a desk and you say, it feels hard and the surface is a little bit nubbly or things like that. Um, but it also involves feelings within you, with your bodily reactions. So for example, if you're describing a situation where you were nervous, uh, you might be, de might be describing how your heart is beating 90 miles an hour and your palms are all sweaty. So getting that feeling, and this is a really good way to get the reader emotionally pulled in to the situation. If you can hit them with a gut reaction, as it were, or something like that. Um, so that's a sense that you can use to engage the reader. Another way to engage the reader, another sense, is taste. And taste is once again something that often has a strong emotional connotation. Uh, for example, if you're talking about a special occasion, a lot of times there's special food that goes with it. Uh, for instance, a wedding, you may talk about the taste of this really sweet icing on the wedding cake and how it tastes all sugary and pink. Uh, yeah, pink is a taste. Um, anyhow, uh, or again, if we're talking about a situation, say, where you were nervous or frightened, you may have that, you know, that sour taste that comes up in the back of your mouth. Um, that's another kind of thing you can do to get the reader very emotionally involved. And then finally, uh, the most uh, primitive
relative of the senses is smell. Smell is, again, a very good way to engage the reader emotionally. Uh, if you're talking about some time, uh, some experience you had where there were smells involved, uh, say you went out camping in the woods and you could smell the pine trees uh, and smell uh, other things around, um, that would be something. Um, and smell, as I've mentioned, is the most primitive of the senses. And that is part of why it is a very emotionally gripping sense. Uh, because what happens when you're smelling, there's a lobe of your brain right behind your nose. Uh, so you're actually smelling directly with your brain. There's not a long nerve pathway that this sense is going to. And the other thing is that this part of the brain that does the smelling is right next to the part of the brain that does emotions. And an example I have of how smell works and how primitive it is uh, was my husband's grandmother. She lived to be 103. Uh, and the first 100 years were really good. She did, you know, hiking tours of Greece when she was 95 and things like that. Uh, but the last three years, she really went downhill. Um, she had dementia, so mentally she wasn't there. Uh, she was blind, uh, so she couldn't see. She was deaf. Um, and uh, she couldn't walk anymore. She was, had to, uh, couldn't even use a wheelchair, was in bed. So there was really almost nothing left of her. But I say almost nothing because one thing that we could do, we could get her favorite scented hand lotion. And the folks at the nursing home could put it on her hands and she would smell it and she would smile. So even though there was nothing else left of her, she still had smell. So if you can really hit the reader with a powerful smell, that can be a very strong impact. So when you are doing writing, um, look for opportunities to where you can use the senses. Um, even if you're talking about something scientific, uh, try to use the senses uh, as related to that topic, as related to the human experience. Because you really do have to get the human experience in in order for the reader to become involved in your essay, for your essay to be effective.